Listen and understand, hodlers are out there, Sarah. They can't read a white paper. They can't code. They don't fear downturns or regulation. And they will absolutely not sell, ever, until they are wrecked. <sighs> What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Sunday. Hope you're having an awesome day, but I do know Sunday, if we have a look at the charts, it is definitely a bloody, bloody Sunday in the markets. Bitcoin is down 6%. Ethereum is down almost 11%. Litecoin, 9%. So what is happening in the markets? We need to talk about this. Now, yesterday, we spoke about Bitcoin approaching critical levels. Well, we're there, guys. We're at those levels. We are sitting right on the 200 EMA. We're going to talk about that. Currently, it is providing support. However, we are entering a do or die zone where we're going to know probably by the time this video even comes out, but definitely by the end of the day, whether or not we are going to be going back up or if we have some lower lows that we're going to be putting in. I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about the fact that we may be in trouble with some of these sanctions that we're imposing and these countries that are circumventing it. Okay, we have obviously Iran, Russia, China, uh, even Venezuela. So we definitely need to talk about that. Also, the IRS putting out guidelines on basically how to find people that are trying to, you know, money launder and do stuff like that with crypto. So the space is definitely getting pretty crazy. And finally, before we move on, $5 billion worth of Tether that was printed. So we're going to talk about that. You probably already heard about that, but it was interesting because there was a little bit of a jump right here. So we'll talk about that. We're going to get into that. If that sounds good to you, well, you know what to do. Also, if it's your first time checking out the Crypto Zombie channel and you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? We do this every single day, even on Sunday, as you can tell. And yes, it is Sunday, which means that tomorrow is the Ledger Nano S giveaway. So all you got to do is drop a comment on this video or any video throughout the course of the week, and that makes you eligible. Now, let's give this a quick refresh live. You notice that Bitcoin dominance is up 0.1%. I don't know what is going on with Ethereum. My goodness, Ethereum is just plus plummeting right now. But we do have a $293 billion market cap. So unfortunately, we are now sitting again below the $300 billion cap. We have Icon up 37% though, amid all the madness. It was actually up 50% earlier. Bazant up 21%. Engine Coin, V Systems, Quant still putting in a 2% today. Aurora waves, and then we basically go into the stable coin. So it is not a good day in the market. Very, very red day in the market. Having a look over here, I don't got to tell you what they're doing. They're selling. There is a lot of selling. The shorts are up to 52.84%. So could we have a short squeeze? That's possible. It is possible. We, we could have these shorts get squeezed and we might, you know, go straight to the moon. It's possible. We're going to talk about that maybe potentially moving forward. But having a look at this chart, we clearly fell below our support. So currently, we are invalidated. Now, we do have this mid-trend line from the original ascending broadening wedge, so you could say we may come down to about that $10,000 level. However, what I really, really wanted to talk about was this 200 exponential moving average that we just keep getting supported by on the four hour. If you look at it, when we came down from this, when we hit the $14,000 level and came all the way down to $9,660, well, we literally kissed it and bounced back up. And currently we are finding ourselves at the exact same level again. Now, the reason that this level has played out as such importance recently is going back, you can see, once we basically got above here around, uh, you know, February, uh, 8th, you know, you could see that it's basically provided support every single time we touched it, we touched it, we touched it again. And then you can see here we bounced up. And uh, once we got a little bit too high, we came back down here, we touched it again on April 25th. And once we got uh, too far away from it again, we came down here multiple times. And then that provided the support after the major run up. So currently, that is something to keep our eyes on. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at first off. Now, also opening this up and looking at this sort of, you know, triangle that we've been forming, you could see we did go into this blue zone. I talked about it yesterday. You could watch the video. I talked about probably the low being around that $10,615 level. We have respected it. Clearly, we're staying inside of it. So if you do think that, you know, potentially we are going to maintain this triangle, then, you know, we may 
be fine and, and end up going up, you know, back up again. But like I said, if we fall out of this region, you know, we're going to fall out of the support of the triangle, out of the blue box zone, and we're going to fall below the 200 EMA. So if all three of those things happen and we, we end up somewhere down here, that is going to be a serious problem for Bitcoin. And if that does happen, then we're going to change our tune on this channel. But currently, if we maintain in this box and find ourselves bouncing around here a little bit more, then I'm still looking for a breakout potentially towards the end of this month. Okay. So so that's the situation. Now you can see some of the levels as Josh Rager was talking about. As you guys know, I'm a very big fan of Josh Rager. I, I do like his analysis. And he says, really want price to stay in close above 10,900s to maintain hope. Well, that's probably not going to happen right now. But he says any break in close below 10,577 would signal a change in trend short term. And I'd be on the look at low 9Ks as the next target on the daily. But he says still a bull market, in my opinion, would only be a you know pullback, which I also probably agree with that as well. As you could see, even having a look over here at the EMA ribbon, you know, we came down here and we have pulled back up. So as long as we're staying within the ribbon on the daily and we're not falling below the ribbon, then it's basically just providing a cushion. We're having a pullback, right? We're having some sellers taking profits. And obviously we do need to look at this VPVR, which is very strong around the $11,332 region, which means that's where we were mostly accumulating Bitcoin pretty much since around the 23rd of this month give or take. Actually, I would say more around the 25th. But long story short, is that going to be some kind of a resistance? Probably not, because when we were looking at the $6,400 level, that was the main support that we had from 2018's bear market. We had no difficulty blasting right back through that. So I don't think getting back above this level will give us any any trouble. Um, I think it's more or less, are we going to go back above the level, you know, short term? So that's what we're going to keep our eyes on here. And you could see that we were putting in that support. Basically, where Josh Rager was talking around that, I have 10,500 yeah 10,580 dollars and you could see that's because back here we were supported on the 27th uh we also had the the bottom of the red candle on the first and then on the second that's where we started to pump and currently we've been literally stomped out so once again it is respecting it, it's respecting the trend right so and obviously we do know the trend is your friend until the end and i'm your friend to the end Heidi ho <laughs> <laughs> wow he's something isn't he Super guppy, still full on green, and this is that long trend line that we were that we were talking about the other day with Crown. So this is the one that's been going pretty much for the entire existence of Bitcoin, right? This is the trend right here. So you could see, even if you think you know we're just gonna literally just plummet straight down right to the bottom, well that would bring us to eight thousand dollars. So there is a very, 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 very good chance that we do not go below eight thousand dollars, maybe ever again. <laughs> in these markets, okay? But that being said, I just wanted to be realistic about that moving forward. And also, thank you to Java Monster, Crypto Zombie, and the Super Guppy. Thank you so much. This was over on Twitter. I do appreciate that. So the thing is, if you are having a look at this and you do notice these key levels and you're seeing an opportunity, well, what could you do? Well, you could do nothing. <laughs> okay, that's a safe bet. We could wait to see what happens if this does fall out. If it falls out, then we know to get a little bit more bearish. If we start pumping and we get back out of this blue box zone, so say we break above 11,161, well, then I would at that point say that we're going back up. So it's very critical. I'm not going to make a decision up or down either way today because we're right at the point. I don't know. If we go lower, then it's bearish. So that's what we're going to be looking at, guys. So how can you play this? Like I said, well, dollar cost average, you can't go wrong with that right? If you are of the belief that we're going to, you know, go upwards more, there is always an opportunity to put in a long on Bybit. Um, currently, this is very, uh, very risky time to do it. I would like to sort of have some confirmation that we're going to be either going up or down either way. But that being said, that is one way you could play it. Other than that, I wouldn't really be doing any crazy trading right now until we know what direction we're going to be going in, okay? So that is just basically basically that moving forward. Also, if you guys haven't uh, signed up for Bybit or you don't even know what it is or you're curious how to long or short, I have put a video. I do have a tutorial. If you guys want to check it out, if you know what you're doing, well, I have a referral link below. You guys know you don't have to use it, but it does help out the channel. Now, Five billion dollars worth of USDT was minted yesterday. People were freaking out. They were all excited. It's funny. I was actually on Reddit and like people were like, yeah, Tether got printed. We're going to the moon. 
Which is funny. It just goes to show the way that like crypto is because normally, you know, we're talking about Tether not being backed by the dollar. Um, you know, there's a lot of scandals around it, but yet people are rooting for it getting printed, which I thought was funny. But it actually turns out that even though it has been print, we have had Tether basically printing nonstop during this entire bull run. You had the CTO of Bitfinex basically coming out and saying, while preparing the issue for Omni to Tron swap, there's been an issue with the token decimals. Please check the burn transactions below. So then you could see they actually burned 500 million over here, and then they burned 4.500 over here. So long story short, I guess they were basically just trying to move 50 million. So it was crazy. It, it was nuts. Everybody was freaking out, but it, uh, that's basically what happened. They made a mistake. And yeah, now I wanted to talk about this moving forward. Okay. So somebody actually messaged, uh, Wells Fargo and said something fishy is going on with my bank. Wells Fargo. I can't buy crypto on cash app or Coinbase. I tried to attach my debit card and it said card not found. And I just use it to pay my bills. Anybody else having this issue to which they reply? Thanks for reaching out to us. Unfortunately, Wells Fargo does not allow transactions involving cryptocurrency. Interesting. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a fan of people telling me what I can and can't do with my money, which is hence why I do own, uh, you know, Bitcoin and why I do believe in cryptocurrencies moving forward. And interestingly enough, wasn't Wells Fargo the guys that had the issue where people couldn't get their money out of the ATMs and everybody's money was stuck, right? Also, how about the fact that although Wells Fargo was a contributor to one of the largest ever financial crisis and after a series of financial scandals, U.S. taxpayers still had to break or bail them out in the financial crisis, they received $25 billion of Emergency Economic Stabilization Act funds through a preferred stock purchased by the U.S. Treasury Department. But we should let these guys dictate what we do with our money, right? Because, yeah, I mean, come on, man, get get away. If you're if you have a Wells Fargo bank account, why? Why? Get out of it. Don't don't let these people tell you what you can and can't do with your money. Also, here's the interesting thing. The IRS just put out a cyber crimes, uh, I don't know what to even call this, a pamphlet, a document. And I mean, this thing is extremely lengthy. It goes into you know, how, like blockchain, how to, how to, how to read the blockchain. They talk about Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Stellar, all these different cryptocurrencies. I mean, this thing is really long, guys. So it looks like they're trying to educate them. Um, so yeah, guys, you know, pay your taxes and don't try to don't, none of that uh, none of that uh, money laundering tax evasion stuff. And also, just so you know, if you are using Bitcoin, it's only pseudo anonymous. So yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty terrible instrument if you're looking to money launder or do something illegal. So yeah, if you're holding Bitcoin. Don't be doing illegal things with it, okay? So that is just something I wanted to point out. But also, here's the few things I wanted to leave today's video off on uh, because I don't want it to. I don't want to have today's video be really, really long. Um, it is a Sunday, but here's the thing right here. So congressional leaders reportedly draft a bill to stop big tech firms from launching cryptocurrencies. Okay. So a draft discussion bill has surfaced online that targets big tech companies attempting to expand into finance. So in an effort to stop competition with the U.S. dollar. The bill seeks to prohibit tech giants from spinning up new cryptocurrencies and offering financial services. Now, it sounds to me like this could potentially be a direct response to what's going on with Libra, right? I mean, they're they're scared. They're worried. You know, you saw the tweet from J Donald Trump that came out the other day saying that, you know, Libra is not money and Bitcoin's not money. And you're definitely seeing the fear of you know, what's going to happen if people start moving their funds and hedging against the dollar, against these other fiat systems, right? And what if we do start using Libra? I mean, granted, we do have the fear of, I mean, I'm worried about Libra in general just because of the surveillance state of Facebook, right? But outside of that, just also having more control over your funds, I don't know. It's just something that definitely bothers me. I'm not going to be buying any Libra, that's for sure. But you could read right here, in the document, it says a large platform utility may not establish, maintain, or operate a digital asset that is intended to be widely used as a medium of exchange, unit of account, store of value, or any other similar function as defined by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. Any large platform utility or financial institution that violates this shall be subject to a fine of not more than a million dollars per day of such violation in an action brought by the appropriate federal financial regulator. So I'll tell you what, guys, for all those crypto projects out there that are making tokens, you better make damn sure it's a utility token because if they find out that you're making these financial instruments of money, could be an issue, guys, could be an issue. So um, we'll have to see if... Uh, Stable coins pop off a little bit after that, right? But there was this study that came out from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, okay? And this is where I'm going to end today. 
because it has a lot to do with the U.S. and, you know, are we going to fall behind if we don't really get on the bandwagon with this, right? So talking about Venezuela, Iran, Russia, and China, they're currently uh, experimenting with cryptocurrencies. That's not a surprise. We've talked about that on the channel, right? So it says here for decades... U.S. adversaries have been trying to evade and undermine the power that the U.S. has, but there's been no way to conduct significant international commerce without moving through the pipes of the U.S.-led global financial system. Now, however, new pipelines are being built thanks to cryptocurrency. So you have Russia, Iran, Venezuela have initiated blockchain technology experiments that their leaders paint as tools to offset U.S. financial uh, <clears throat> coercive power, excuse me guys, and increased sanction resistance. So China is also wary of U.S. financial power and the ever-present threat of sanctions against China's officials, as the researcher stated. So scrolling down here, it says, with the goal of facilitating trade and investment outside the grip of the U.S., Russia financial institutions are running multiple blockchain pilots. The country's Ministry of Finance is also planning to develop a regional crypto with other members of the EAEU. So I know this is a little bit long, but bear with me here. According to the study, Iran is investing heavily in blockchain development with no plans to create a national cryptocurrency, which would be, oh, with plans to create a national cryptocurrency, which would be used for domestic transaction settlements. Another crypto in the works by Iran is by the startup, uh, Kuknos, in which the organization seeks to develop a gold-backed digital currency called Payment, okay? So they also go on to say, of all U.S. adversaries, China is best positioned to develop blockchain-based digital currency infrastructure that could compete with the dollar-based financial system. In addition, I know, I know I'm reading a lot, but this is a lot of information. In addition to its state-backed crypto development, the People's Bank of China and Chinese authorities are researching blockchains used for credit, finance, and real estate projects, as well as blockchain-powered securities. So, with all of these guys building their own blockchain sanctions, uh, blockchain sanctions resistance. It is crucial for the U.S. to be in a leading position during the international crypto race, as they put it. And they say that the United States needs to ensure that blockchain projects are developed in a way that will expand the transparency, freedom, and prosperity of the last century. So long story short, yeah, we got to ask ourselves, and I'm a U.S. citizen, guys. I'm all for the U.S. I'm all for the U.S. dollar, but we all know that the dollar is weakening. We know that inflation is happening. Um, you know, the president came out and said, said it himself yesterday, which was quite crazy that he, he was looking to weaken it a little bit, which I know blows your mind. But that doesn't make any sense. Then you got... You know, guys coming out, Mnuchin, saying that, you know, we might not have enough cash by September. We need to borrow more. So all of this is just starting to come down. And I'm realizing what I've been realizing all this time, which is that cryptocurrencies are obviously the better solution. Now, I, I can't speak for every altcoin that there is, but I can definitely speak for Bitcoin, okay? And you guys know how I feel about it, and definitely moving forward, that is why I do believe that Bitcoin is the way to go. And come on, guys, let's be real. Here's a picture over at Subway. Sorry, but we cannot accept $50 or $100 bills. Thank you, management. So you can't take my money. I have a $50 bill and I have a $100 bill, but you can't take that. You don't want that. I mean, yes, okay, I get it. If I had a credit card, fine. But my point is, is that you're having places telling you you can't spend your money because we've been having too many counterfeits, right? Well, you can't counterfeit Bitcoin. And then also looking at the fact that banks are telling you that you can't buy cryptocurrencies. That's crazy to me. That's unacceptable. You need to take back your power, not financial advice, you know, obviously, but um, yeah. So having a look at what's going on, it looks like we're being, we're respecting the line, guys. So we'll keep a look. We'll have a look at what's going on. Don't freak out, guys. It's just crypto. Listen, if it does go lower, it's just a better chance of dollar cost average, right? So that being said, guys, I do want to say thank you so much once again for coming back to the channel. Everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commentating, you guys rock. Um, yeah, $5 billion uh, worth of Tether printed. That was pretty funny. I think it was really funny how people were just like rooting for it. it, it you gotta laugh with this space sometimes. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single freaking day, even on my Sundays, because you guys are